Talking about a man you said is your mentor, apart from your father. How does it feel to be part of this, and what does this mean to you? Very, very emotional. Uh, like I said, this is the first time I'm actually having to sit and talk about um, uh, Alaji Tete um, openly. It's been a, a grief that um, we have suppressed uh, back home, and we have done that privately. So um, it's very emotional, but it's, it's also very good. It's liberating as well, you know, to see so many people echoing the same feelings that I have and so really have for Alaji Tete, you know. Um, so it just goes to prove that I mean, he was just a special person to me or to Sorelli. This is a man, this is how he always was. He's, you know, what I feel about him and feel for him is the same as, as all the other Ghanaians. Um, a very special person. What sort of impact did Alaji make in you in becoming the Sierra FA president and finally into the CAF Esco? You know, when someone's your mentor, you know that uh, he's made a huge impact in your life. Um, my father inspired me. You know, he um, was a banker by profession, but he um, was very active in football and in one of the biggest clubs in, in Sao But um, as I grew older and I started to nurture that passion for football, then Alaji Tete came into my life in 2004, 2005. And he made a huge impact. He actually... Uh, uh, financially as well as to how to, like people say here, how to make a, a, a football a business, uh, as well as uh, the love of the sport, genuine love of the sport, and young boys. You know, uh, I was very much into youth football, I still am, and so was he. So we had that very common, strong bond. Um, you know, the impact that he's made and how has he helped me to become the football. My club became the most successful youth club in the country. And um, a Premier League club, and this was all down to the training and the guidance that I got from him. And it was the success of um, my club that um, I used as a as a campaign to my presence. So in many ways, that's how we created that. And everything that I, you know, the virtues that I have still that I hold very strong and dear, um, I got from him as well. Um, so. Like I said, I so, so wish that he was here to see my successes, my games, and I also miss him greatly when I go wrong and I make mistakes, because I know that he would have been around to guide me. I'm fair talking to you without touching on the upcoming Sierra Leone elections. Have you assessed your chances? What are your chances in these elections? Well, everybody goes with the belief that they, they will win. Um, I think that um, in the four years that I've been uh, the president, two years have been marked with uh, the Ebola. Uh, the rest of the one and a half years, there's been a lot of political turmoil and infighting and all sorts of um, unprofessional activities that isn't good for the game. But even with that, you know, there's been some great success stories with our coaches, our female um, coaches and referees um, and trying to raise a female uh, league and even our national team you know you see how Sorio and our national teams quite an impressive side you know, despite all the, the problems so um, I think I stand a good chance but I, I said also uh, in a BBC interview just a few days ago that um, you know, sometimes um, you know success isn't always ga uh, um, gauged by winning trophies um, it's the legacy that you leave behind, it's the impact that you make on others. So I'm going to give it a good shot. I hope I win so that I can finish what I've started and leave a very good and strong foundation behind. Do you feel you've done enough to merit a second tenure? Yes, absolutely, because I think um, um, our football culture and um, the foundation 
had all been destroyed, really. And again, against the odds, I tried very hard to resurrect all of that again. So I know that I've done well. My executive has done well. And um, it's just about giving me a chance to just build on what I started and um, to continue what I started and to build a, a very strong foundation and uh, a force to be a force to be reckoned with. Tomorrow is the CAF Exco meeting. Um, one of them definitely is going to be whether Kenya will host the CHAN tournament next year. Have you had the opportunity of speaking to some of your friends and will Kenya host the 2018 CHAN? We're going to have a look at uh, that uh, topic and that issue. You know, one thing is for certain, um, whatever decisions are made will not be uh, a biased decision. It won't be built on sentiment either. Um, it is actually what is best for the game. Um, are they ready? Is it a feasible idea? You know, um, if it isn't feasible, if they're not ready and we look at it critically, um, I don't think it'll happen. But if there is room or scope um, for improvement and uh, we can we can host it there, then why not? Um, again, you know, uh, let's have a look at it. I, I really can't predict, but uh, you know, I have spoken to my colleagues. I've spoken to the Kenyan uh, FA president, who's very certain that uh, we, they can host it. So let's have a look. We'll see tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. See, you, see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Uh. All right. All right. Love you all. Finally, people have come together to recognize the input of your husband, what he made in Ghana football. What does this mean to you and your family? This means a lot to us. What else can I say than to thank the organizers? Because my late husband was the child of the universe. So to this program will forever remain. We are grateful for the organizers. All those who thought about it. I wish you all the best and may God be with you. Thank you, dear. God bless you. 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 God bless you.